Oh. We've been pretty spoiled back here in a way, you know. I mean, we ain't got run on water or, or electricity or nothing like that, but yeah, all the uh, convenience of home is right here. You know? This is North Camp, a long, skinny patch of woods that runs along railroad tracks in the city of Walker. It's on land owned by the railroad. It's been there at least 10 years, and it's growing. This is a nice place. And uh, Walker City Commissioner said as long as we don't have any uh, complaints that he doesn't care if we're down here. Not far away along the east bank of the Grand River, a man known as Doc staked out this camp two years ago. This is East Camp. This is East Camp. Yeah, we call this East Camp. It's in Grand Rapids, a step down from North Camp, but a step up, he says, from the streets. And police leave them alone too. Just three miles down river, you will find what this city calls island number three. Just beyond the shadows of the Amway Grand Plaza, J.W. Marriott and Charlie's Crab. It might as well be called Homeless Island, home to two dozen people this summer and last. It's a 10 minute walk from downtown. You know, it's 20 degrees cooler right here than it is anywhere else. It's completely shaded. There's, there's little to no bugs. It's all sand. You can walk around here barefoot. You know, it's great. But while other camps are left alone, police are trying to clear the island. It's right in the middle of the city. It's the first we had heard of it, so it was a surprise. Camps like these are nothing new, throwbacks to the Great Depression. But the recent growth has left cities struggling with how to deal with them. Camps have been getting much, much larger. A lot more people have been finding them, building them. That's why I'm here and nobody will give me a job. But. Some, like Doc, have criminal records. And for many, not surprisingly, alcohol abuse is a common denominator. No, I'm a drunk. I'm not an alcoholic. Alcoholics go to AA. <laughs> it was the murder of a homeless man at a camp along 28th Street in Wyoming that prompted Target 8 to take a closer look at these camps. A fellow camper is accused of killing him. The city of Wyoming has since cleared out that site, and others have also been shut down in a triangle at the interchange of 131 and 96 in Walker. Sam lives on island number three in Grand Rapids, the one we're calling Homeless Island. And I came uh, to Grand Rapids because I figured it's a lot easier to be homeless in Grand Rapids than it is in Muskegon. Because in Grand Rapids, it's actually one of the, it's, I heard it's really nice to be homeless here because there's like a church on every, on every corner. Here, the homeless aren't so well hidden. While you can't see them from US 131 where 90,000 cars a day fly by, Nearby businesses complained to police in early July. That they were tired of seeing teenagers in their underwear bathing in the river. It's also using the river as a toilet. About the same time, a worker in one of the nearby buildings complained to Wood TV through reported. Sam says he followed a friend to the island in May after the death of his father left him with nowhere else to live. He says he doesn't plan to leave, that the city can't even prove who owns it. The city? or neighbors. The island wasn't even there in the late 1800s. It may have started forming after the first railroad bridge was built in 1882. Even though on the map it says that it's um, it's it's city property listed in the map. If we're able sense? to confirm that the city of Grand Rapids owns the island in question, then it's very simple. Either way, she says, Sam and his island mates must go. I would say there's a number of missions downtown where he could probably find lodging. I'm just trying to exist. I've already been driven to the brink of society. You know, and they still don't want us here. In the city of Walker, police know exactly where to find the slowly expanding North Camp, and they have left it alone, except to drop off coats in the winter. One of them come back here, you guys need a few cigarettes and this and that, and gave out a couple cards of cigarettes. To. On a recent hot day, residents say firefighters filled up wading pools donated by a local preacher. A Walker city commissioner says he stops by to check on them. You can't see North Camp from the street, but it's visible from space, barely inside the Walker city limit, where thousands drive by, unaware. It's grown to about 10 homes with outhouses, one with a sink and lights, another with donated vinyl siding and a half moon window. That was actually on this lot when I started building this place and I just incorporated it into my home. Walker police call it a peaceful place, home to 15 to 20 men and women. It's just, I. I have privacy and uh, I don't really have to answer to authority, you know, it's 
mean, not that I, I have a small problem with authority and I, I don't have anybody telling me what to do when I'm back here. But some want it kept a secret. I don't know who brought you, I don't know who told you. Get the f out of here. Plain and simple, well, we don't we want do nobody here. But others welcome you to their off the grid neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. So this is Cookie's humble honey <laughs> cabin. <laughs> Is it, huh? Yeah, this is it. This is home? Yeah, this is home. 180 square feet, a pot belly stove, that half moon window, and a loft that he sometimes rents out to homeless friends for $25 a week. And a mailbox that never gets mail. But Cookie brags most about his pets. Yeah, I got my rats. I don't have television, I have rat vision. This is definitely the best place I've ever lived in. Target 8 took you inside those camps to show you their daily lives and how cities are dealing with them differently. Tonight we want to show you how for many a missed paycheck led to a life on the streets and how just one break can get them that ticket home. Here's Target 8 investigator Ken Colker. Yeah, I got a home in North Dakota. I want to be back. Home for Alan Price has been a gathering of tents on the Grand River in northern Grand Rapids, a spot known to the homeless as East Camp. He's lived there with his girlfriend, Sandy, and others, including his new friend, Bobby. What can I say? We hey, live out here in the woods. This, this is our home out here. This is where we live. They survive on welfare and by begging. And that's not the way they should live, says the head of Servant Center, who checked on them one recent morning. The nonprofit wants to get them off the streets, perhaps into Exodus Place, a former halfway house. Nobody should have to live like this. And for these folks, they don't know any other alternatives rather than to build a camp. So if you get into recovery and we can get you back into housing in Exodus, you're willing to try that. I don't want to Exodus. I sleep out here before. I don't want to be back in Exodus. Don't want to, man. I don't like it. Don't want to be there. So when it gets cold, what are you going to do? I don't know. I figure out something. But as for Alan Price, he wants yeah, out eat, now. He says he moved to Grand Rapids several years ago to help with his dad, but his van broke down, and like everybody else at the camp, he doesn't have a job. But they see we dusty and dirty and stuff. They don't want to Look at me. Look at me. You can't keep on more dirtier than what I am right now. Ain't nobody gonna hire me. Price says he moved to East Camp four months ago, but the prospect of a farm job in North Dakota, his real home, has been calling. And so Patrick Cameron got Price's mom on the phone. So if we get Al back there, he's got a job. We're going to be working on getting Al back there. Um, I don't know if we can get him on a bus yet tomorrow, but we will certainly start next week try to get him on a bus on Monday. Your mom started to cry. Your mom started to cry. She wanted me home. That's cool. They love me down there. I wish I had some family that loved me that much. I'm gonna go home. I got my job back. I'm gonna start That's working. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I'm excited. Good thing. Yeah. It was a very good thing. I'm excited to get there. I can't wait. I got a life there. Here I ain't got no life. Then a promise to his new friend. I tell you what, I get down there, and if you're still in this predicament, I'll get on my feet. I'll get you a ticket down there and get you a job there. If you work and you work hard, you can't let me I do down. work hard. And Ellen Price and his girlfriend caught a Greyhound bus four days after we met them with tickets paid for by Servants Center. We're told that they are now each making $11 an hour at a farm in North Dakota. And we have much more on this story right now on woodtv.com. You can watch our original story from 24 Hour News 8 at 5 today, showing you how these men and women live in these camps. And we also have video profiles of some of the homeless people we met in the camps. And if you want to help the Servants Center in their efforts to get homeless people off the streets, we have a link to its website where you can get more information. Today, just weeks after a Target 8 investigation showed how these camps have spread and grown, the Hartside Health Center visited the camps. Target 8's Ken Colker spent the afternoon with them and has this story tonight. Today at several camps in the Grand Rapids area, nurses made house calls on the homeless. In 2000, a woman ran me down on plane because it broke my leg. This is South Camp, a gathering of several tents on a stream not far from the North Camp. It was at the North Camp, a collection of about a dozen shacks, wow. where the nurses started today. Actually, an RN, several nursing students, and some volunteers, all working for the Heartside Health Center. 
and working with Servant Center, an agency that helps the homeless. You got a nice place here. Was, we drove by and we were kind of impressed. Right. Cookie recently built a chalet at the North Camp. We're out here doing health screenings. I don't know if you're interested in a screening. He has high blood pressure, a bad back, allergies, acid reflux, okay. needs dental work, and needs glasses. Because my glass is broken. Uh, found these in a dumpster. But for medical care, he goes to the ER. When was the last okay. time you went to ER? Well, um, let's see, it was about three and a half months ago. I was having trouble breathing. These are among a handful of camps that have popped up around Grand Rapids. But the men and women who live here are a long way from the Heartside District near downtown Grand Rapids and the Heartside Health Center where they can get free federally funded health care. But it is sad and it breaks my heart to know that this does exist and that we can maybe do a little more work to kind of end it. We need all the help we can get down here. This is, uh, we don't have a lot of people coming down here to, that really are interested in us and really want to help us. I don't need that. I ain't got no teeth. The leaders of the Heartside Health Center hope this is the beginning of a new outreach to homeless around Grand Rapids. In Walker, Ken Colker, 24 Hour News 8. To many, they are the hidden homeless living in camps that have popped up around Grand Rapids. Our series of Target 8 reports last month opened many eyes to the camps. Today for the first time, several weeks after those first reports, nurses went out to some of the camps to check on the men and women who live there. Target 8 investigator Ken Colker was there as the nurses made their rounds. He has our story tonight. Today at several camps in the Grand Rapids area, nurses made house calls on the homeless. How did this lung sound? I didn't hear anything. Good. That's nice. They started at the North Camp, a collection of hand-built shacks in the city of Walker. Being out here clearly today, I didn't even know where I was. The nurses visited with about a half a dozen of the men and women who call this home. It means you need some help. I know I need so, some help. I know I need some help. I've just been so desperately scared of trying. I, well, baby steps now that you're yeah. getting used to it. The men and women at these camps live far from the Heartside Health Center near downtown Grand Rapids where they can get free federally funded health care. We're right down the street from God's Kitchen and Guiding Light Mission. So the center for the first time visited the camps, an RN, several nursing students, and some volunteers, all working with Servant Center, an agency that helps the homeless. But it is sad, and it breaks my heart to know that this does exist and that we can maybe do a little more work to kind of end it. you got a nice place here. We drove by and we were kind of impressed. Cookie recently built this chalet at the North Camp. We're out here doing health screenings. I don't know if you're interested in a screening. He has high blood pressure, a bad back, allergies, acid reflux, needs dental work, and needs glasses. My glass is broken. I found these in a dumpster. But for medical care, he goes to the ER. When was the last time you went to ER? Well, um, let's see, it was about three and a half months ago. I was having trouble breathing. We need all the help we can get down here. This is, uh, we don't have a lot of people coming down here to, that really are interested in us and really want to help us. Not far away, the health center found several men living in tents at the South Camp. 2000, a woman ran me down on plane field and broke my leg. The nurses hope that these men and women will become regulars at the Heartside Health Center. In Walker, Ken Colker, 24 Hour News 8. Well, they are the hidden homeless, men and women living in camps growing around Grand Rapids. Target 8 introduced you to these camps this summer, but what happens to these men and women when the snow falls and temperatures drop below freezing? 24 Hour News 8's Ken Colker revisited those camps today. Hey, Ken. Hey, Mark. We started at a place called the North Camp, a small neighborhood of shanties off the grid and along railroad tracks in Walker. The Christmas tree with four or five ornaments is the first thing you notice when Cookie greets you at the door. You got a Christmas tree. Yeah. He cut it down himself from just down the railroad tracks. He put it up the day after Thanksgiving and will take it down on New Year's Day, just like his family did when he was growing up. Most holidays, you know, they just pass us over because it's just another day of the year. But not Christmas, even at a homeless camp. Under his tree are a pair of jeans and a shirt given to him by his mom. What's it like like waking up here on Christmas morning? Cold. <laughs> yeah, my stove went out overnight, and so it was kind of chilly in here, but it doesn't take long to warm this place up. 
we introduced you to Cookie last summer, living in a vinyl-sided A-frame that he built on the northern edge of North Camp. Why not go to a shelter when it gets cold? I don't like the rules. Yeah. You know, I like being told when I gotta be home, when to go to bed, when to get up, you know, what time I have to eat, all that. Yeah, you know, I'm a big boy, man. You know, I, I'm not a kid anymore. For the men and women living in about a dozen shanties at this camp, survival is all about firewood and potbelly stoves. It's not a lifestyle that everybody would want to live, but it's, you know, we, we choose to live this way. You know, most of us do anyway. We're, most of us aren't down here because we have nowhere else to go. It's just we choose to, be, we choose to live like this. Smoke pours from the metal flues rising from the 10 or so shanties at North Camp. But not from this one, at least not at first. Now, baby, we'll back in. This is where Denny Boyd, his girlfriend, and their gravel voiced neighbor, hey, how you doing? are spending New Year's Eve. We need wood. Their firewood is wet and it's taking a while to get started in their wood stove. This summer, when we introduced you to the men and women at North Camp, fire was more of a place to gather or to cook. What up, brother? Now, it's a matter of survival. When it gets down, we're down to like 10 below zero. Are you going to be okay out here? Oh, yeah. This place stays warm. I'm insulated. You know, this whole place is insulated and I got drywall up. Most use donated firewood or wood yanked from old pallets. A few good people out there looking out for us. This is one of three homeless camps we found around Grand Rapids. The two others on an island and along the Grand River now stand cold and empty. It's not a lifestyle that everybody would want to live, but it's... You know, we, we choose to live this way. At North Camp, a Christmas tree with four or five ornaments takes up much of Cookie's hand-built A-frame. He cut the tree down himself from just down the tracks. Most holidays, you know, they just pass us over because it's just another day of the year. But not Christmas, even at a homeless camp. Under his tree are a pair of jeans and a shirt given to him by his mom. Don lives down the way. He is a grandfather of three, says he doesn't want to go on TV. But he says he's running short on fire. Yeah, this is my third winter out here. This is your third winter out here? Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. It's not as easy as people think. At Gary's place a few doors down, the battery-powered thermometer reads 51. Now hopefully it ain't going to be here one more winter, you know what I mean? It, it is kind of lonely because you it, and it's different though being back here in this like what do you call it kind of lost island place you know yeah. until we knocked on his door today he had lost track of what day this is and i thought oh yeah it's new year's eve i kind of totally forgot about it most of the men and women we talked to were most concerned about whether they'd have enough firewood to last the winter if you're interested in helping we have a link online to servant center which works with the homeless also, you can find our original series on the hidden homeless along with photographs at woodtv.com.